Okay, I've got 50 reasons why I think you should start a record label. Why am I doing this? I don't know. I've got the time. <laughs> why not? If you are thinking about starting a record label, you should go to otherrecordlabels.com slash toolkit, where I have a record label toolkit that you can download for free. It has checklists, has a workbook, has a bunch of things that will help you get started. I mean, listen, I don't think, I mean, I've got 50 reasons, so I, I want to get started right away. But like, I don't think this is something you need to overthink. I think it's great to have more people who are helping artists and whatever. That leads me to my first point. Artists need advocates. Number one, artists need advocates. That just means that like an artist is busy making music and it's great if they can have a team member to come alongside them and help on the promoting side and help to encourage them and inspire them and to enable them and to give them money and that kind of stuff. Number two is fans actually appreciate curators. Fans really like it when we go to someone that we respect or we admire or just someone who's good at kind of collecting music. I mean, you might be that already for your friends. They're like, hey, heard any good music lately? Somebody stopped me the other day on the street, a friend of mine, and they were like, what are you listening to? I just need to know because I like whatever you normally listen to. So you might be that for some people. Number three, you're unique. I mean, that's really it. And, and you might think, oh, there's already too many record labels out there, or I want to start a punk label, but there's too many punk labels, or I want to start a hip-hop label, but there's too many hip-hop labels. Well, there is no label yet that is run by you. And when you do something that's going to be unique to yourself, especially if you be organic and you be natural and you make it a representation of what you are and what you like as a music band. Number four, it's easier now than it's ever been before. So if you've ever thought about starting a record label in the past 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 years, now is the best time. Maybe tomorrow will be even a better time, but now is a really good time because the barriers for entry are pretty much gone. I mean, you can meet an artist overseas on the internet. You can get their masters sent to you. You can send those masters off through your digital distributor and you're now a record label. You could do it all. You could do it in one day. Number five reason is that one of the things that have changed, similar to my last point, is that there's a community for you right now. That's cool. There's people on, we have a subreddit that has some cool, helpful people. We have our podcast, other record labels, and then we have our private Facebook group that you can join anytime you want. That's just like people there, a community of other record label owners who are there to help you. So that's another great reason you should start a record label. Number six is that not everyone can do the business side of things. And, and this was one of the things I was talking about when we were talking about artists needing advocates is that sometimes like an artist is like, I just want to create music. I just love making music. I love being creative, but the business side is hard for them. And so that can be you. I mean, maybe you're a little bit better at being organized or being responsible or gathering things into one place or coming up with strategies and systems. Not every artist can handle that. And so when we ask ourselves, why would an artist sign to my label? Well, I can take on some of the things that maybe they don't like to do or the things that they can do, but they're better served making music. Number seven is it can be a cool source of uh, side hustle income. I mean, we're all looking for a side hustle, right? We're all cutting people's grass and shoveling snow and trying to make a living. And, you know, if you do it right and you really pay attention to your expenses and how to gener generate revenue, then um, this could be a, like a pretty good side hustle and eventually a part-time job and eventually a full-time job. Number eight is that record labels can be really fulfilling. I mean, when you meet somebody and you meet an artist that you absolutely admire and you love so much their music and having that moment where you're able to share that music with the rest of the world, that's an incredible feeling, incredible feeling. Number nine is they can be your own creative outlet. A record label be, can be your creative outlet. If you're not a musician or you're not a creative person necessarily, owning a record label and kind of curating these playlists and curating compilation albums and curating artists and their catalog. That is your creative outlet. Number 10, you can self-release your own music. This is how I got started. Most of the labels I've interviewed on my podcast, this is how they got started as well. They're just self-releasing independent musicians and they wanted to feel a little bit more legitimate. So they kind of created a fake record label name and logo and put it on the back of their CD. That's what I did many years ago. And then 10, 15 years later, the record label still exists and signed other artists. So you can self-release your own music on your label. I encourage you to do that. Number 11, it's a great way to financially support artists. I mean, a lot of us are trying to help artists become more sustainable and we don't want the artists we love to disappear. And so it's a great way to actually fund creatives that we admire and that we love. Number 12, additionally, it's a great way to fund the arts community. When I am preparing a release, I'm paying um, other musicians to help me make a record. I'm paying mastering engineers. I'm paying photographers to take uh, photos and, and videographers and pressing plants and graphic designers. So many people are getting a piece of the pie and it feels good to not only financially support 
uh, our musicians, but also to, to help support the greater arts community. Number 13, there's incredible mental health benefits that come from record labels supporting artists. You're not just helping them financially, but you're actually inspiring them to be more creative and having you on their side can do wonders for their mental health as a creative and as an individual. Number 14 is not a lot of people are doing it. I mean, like I know hundreds, but like that's hundreds out of billions of people. So it's a, you know, we talk about side hustle. It's like, well, listen, starting a record label is kind of a good idea. Like there's not a lot of people who are doing it. Being a curator for great music, I think there's tons of space for us all to do it. So, oh, but you know who is doing it is major labels. Number 15, major labels suck. And we need more indie-minded people like you, people who are generous, people who are innovative, people who are empathetic, and people who are just adventurous, take uh, risks that major labels wouldn't take. Number 16 is that running a record label is a great stepping stone into the music industry. So if you want to work in the music industry, but you're not quite sure where you want to work, you could start a small label and then maybe you move on and you work as a staff member at a bigger label or a, a major label, or maybe you find yourself enjoying the touring side of things and be, you become a touring manager, or maybe you end up working for somewhere like Apple Music or Spotify. So it's kind of like a cool stepping stone into the music industry. Number 17, it's a great way to meet other like-minded musicians and other like-minded creatives. Number 18, it's a great way to network with industry professionals. It's been one of my favorite parts of the job is I've got to learn from people who own pressing plants. I've got to learn from mastering engineers. I've just met hundreds of people in the industry. Number 19, a little esoteric here, but it's kind of a great way to give back to the music universe, if that's a thing. I kind of like to think about the records that I make and the legacy that I make. And I have this weird imagination of like my great grandkids discovering some of the records that I produced in the attic or in a hard drive somewhere. And they're like, oh, look what great, great grandpa made. And they listen to it and they enjoy it or they make fun of me. I don't know, but it's kind of a cool way just to contribute to the music universe. Number 20 is that music is a legacy. I mean, whether, you know, it's our grandkids who are making fun of us or it's it's 100 years from now, people who are discovering our music. And, and honestly, you could release music on your label that gets ignored by the press now, but in 10 years from now, it might be rediscovered and loved or in 100 years from now. Records last forever, but not tapes if you leave them in the sun too long. Number 22, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. I mean, really, nothing is as hard as we make it out to be. And there's tons of resources, my website, otherrecordlabels.com, to help you. And number 23 is that all it takes to be successful, really, is persistence and consistency. It's just like diligence to just keep doing what you believe in and to, to stick at it. And, and some records that you release will do really well, and some records won't be recognized at all. The key is to stay consistent. And if that's one record a month or one record a year, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent and as long as you're persistent. Honestly, the record labels and the independent artists who are successful are the ones who didn't quit when they maybe felt like quitting. Number 24, it's a great opportunity to showcase your integrity. I think there's tons of room for uh, great people to be in the music industry. And the music industry has kind of had a bad rap especially record labels for the, you know, in the eighties and nineties and, and early two thousands. And so this is a great way for a person of integrity to come into the scene and redefine what people think about the music industry. Number 25, we're halfway there. It's essentially free to get started. It's pretty much free. I mentioned that at the beginning, like a Bandcamp account is free. You could design your own logo on a napkin. You can upload the releases. You can't upload them to like Spotify for free, but you could upload it to Bandcamp for free just to get started. Number 26, this is something I love. The possibilities are endless. There's this thing called the X Factor where it's like we're doing something and there is this like sliver of hope that what we're doing could go viral. What we're doing could be the next massive artists. And there's that kind of like that, like buying a lottery ticket. Like it's, you know, it's maybe unlikely, but that little bit of hope is kind of energizing and fun, but the hope is still there. The reality is still possible. And that leads me to number 27 is that running a record label is full of renewable opportunities. Every time you release a new record, that's like buying another lottery ticket. It's like another chance that the public will latch onto this and your label will take off and soar on the charts and and you know what I mean? But it's like when something doesn't succeed, the reason why I encourage you to be consistent and persistent is because the next record could be the one. And then if that isn't, that's okay. The next record is it's renewable every time you release a new single, an EP or an album. 
How are you doing for time? You okay? We're having fun here. Number 28. There's lots of great platforms out there to help you. I've talked about Three Tone, who is my uh, digital distributor, who I'm, I love, and they're very helpful to me. Uh, there's another company called Infinite Catalog, who are friends of the podcast, and they're in a royalty accounting platform. It doesn't matter who my friends are. They're all on our website, but I just like that there's a lot of cool websites out there to help us out. Like Bandcamp is really cool. Um, Limited Run is super cool. And and there's like podcast providers and, and there's just a lot of cool resources to help us. Number 29, I've said cool a couple of times in that last sentence, but number 29 is that creative startups are kind of hot right now. <laughs> like creative startups are just a, a fun thing to be a a part of. There's a low barrier for entry. And then there's kind of like uh, an intriguing potential for a big reward. And so it's just kind of a fun thing to, uh, you know, a record label is a, a creative startup. Number 30, there is a specific group of music fans who like exactly the type of music that you like. This goes back to the very, very beginning. I was talking about being unique. One of the reasons why you should start a record label is because you like a certain type of music. So let's say you like country music, but you actually like lo-fi country music, like where it sounds like the guy like recorded it in a barn on like one microphone, or maybe you like that, but whenever a synthesizer is involved, do you know what I mean? Like there's like a really uh, specific niche of music that you like. And if you hone your labels genre onto that niche, then you are, um, you're going to find less people but you're, the people that you do find are going to be like rabid fans. They're going to be like diehard fans because you represent that really specific type of music. And so there's people out there who like the exact same thing that you do, even if it's a super weird combination, and they're just waiting for you to start a record label. Number 31, physical media is back. I don't know if you've been following, but vinyl is selling like crazy. CDs are still selling, still selling. In fact, the number of CDs are outselling the number of vinyl. Now the, the revenue isn't the same, but, and then tapes are bringing up the rear. People are buying tapes. And so the fact of the matter is it's actually cool to be a record label again, because not just for the digital side of things, which is super easy to do and, and, and fun and rewarding and can be profitable in its own way, but people are actually going out to record stores and they're buying records from your website. They want t-shirts, they want stickers, they want real tangible things. Number 32 is Bandcamp. You got to go to otherrecordlabels.com slash Bandcamp. I've done a whole like feature on them. I really like Bandcamp, but Bandcamp exists. And right now at the time of recording this, they are a great advocate for indie labels and for indie artists. So the fact that Bandcamp exists right now and is a really great resource for record labels means that it's a good time to start a record label. Number 33. Royalty splitting has become 50-50, meaning a record label's relationship with an artist is equal. And I think that's really important. And I, that's one of the things I would encourage you to aim for if you're a record label is a 50-50 profit share with your artist. So what that means is that after the expenses have been paid of manufacturing and production costs and even an artist advance, then you share the profits equally with the artists. In the old days, it would be like you would get 80 or 90 percent that just wasn't a very symbiotic wasn't a very fair relationship today it's moving to 50 50 and i think that's one of the great things about indie record labels today number 34 picking a name is super easy now i know you're thinking i want to start a record label but i just can't settle on a name that's super easy like don't overthink it people overthink it all the time and it's like look at the label names out there right now they were goofy names to begin with and now we think it's a huge big deal sub pop warp you know if i were to say you know, if those labels didn't exist and I told you that was my name, you'd be like, oh, I don't know if that's the best name, but now they're household names. So don't overthink it. It's easy to do. Number 35 is launching is super easy. All you need to do, I said this before, get your name, get a quick logo, put up on Bandcamp. You're good to go. Maybe a social media like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever. You're good to go. Launching is super easy. Now, I like to kind of build up. I like to plan. I like to get my release ready. I might even spend six months to a year planning out my record label if you want to do it right. I'm just saying launching is easy. Number 36 is you can start a digital only label. I mean, we talked about the fact that fans are buying physical media. That's great. But if you don't have the money to invest in manufacturing a thousand records or even two or 300 vinyl records or 500 CDs or 50 tapes, that's okay. You can just sign a band and release just the MP3s on Bandcamp or the Waves or whatever on Bandcamp and just release on digital platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. People ask me all the time, is it okay to just be a digital only label for now? Of course. Number 37, 
artists will sign with your label just based on your enthusiasm as a music fan alone. So you might think, oh my gosh, I need to have a distribution channel in place. I need to have $10,000 to give them as an advance. I need to have a ton of money to do vinyl and to get them studio time. I need to have credibility and, you know, all these. No, no, no. What an artist is really looking for is an advocate. We already talked about it. They're looking for another team member and they're looking for someone who loves their music and wants to work super hard for them. And so you can compensate for some of the stuff that you might be lacking, like money or accolades. You can compensate with enthusiasm. Number 38. Oh, I love this one. Record stores like indie record stores are super friendly to indie labels. Like most of them are really helpful. They'll give you tons of advice. Go down there, buy them a coffee, give them some free records to sell. And you might find that your local record store can be a great advocate for your record label. Number 39 is that playlisting and streaming is helping back catalogs, which is helping the long-term sustainability of a record label. What I mean by that is after you release a few records over the course of a year or two years, even if your songs are only getting like a hundred streams a month, once you times that by a hundred songs or a thousand songs, all of a sudden, now you're doing 10,000 or 100,000 streams a month. There's something interesting happening about the fact that music is rented nowadays on streaming platforms, and it can actually work to the advantage of record labels who can start to develop a little bit more sustainable and predictable income for themselves and for their artists. Number 40, a &R, which is a kind of a fancy term for finding artists um, to sign to your record label. A and R is really easy right now. I'll give you an example of how I like to do A and R, and it's worked for me once and twice now. But you can go to Bandcamp and you can search like new releases, like albums that just came out. And you can narrow by genre, then you can narrow by subgenre, then you can even narrow like by digital only release because you might want to sign an artist who hasn't pressed their record to vinyl yet or to cassette or to CD or something. But you can like add all these filters and go down and down and find like something really specific. What if you're looking for just an artist in your city under a genre and like a really unique subgenre who just released an album, or you can go backwards who hasn't released an album in a couple of years and maybe you want to connect with them. So kind of doing that like artist and repertoire is what A&R stands for. Doing that A&R hunt doesn't mean you have to go to like clubs all over America and listen, stand at the back and look cool and listen to music. You don't have to do that anymore. Number 41 is you don't need to get tied up in the legal stuff. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so please don't sue me with this advice here. But there's always this thinking that like you need to get a lawyer, need to register everything and register a trademark. It's like you, I told you at the very beginning, you could just get started on Bandcamp now and start to worry about that stuff later. You got to pay your taxes. I mean, you got to, you don't necessarily need an LLC to get going right away. Talk to your accountant, talk to your lawyer, but like just to get going, you can just get some music up there have an, a, a template agreement. I have a, a template agreement on my website. You can download for free. That was created by a real lawyer. You can use that just to get started. Number 42, there's a lot of unique promotional opportunities right now in the world, in real life, and in online. You're not limited to just promoting your music on Instagram or on TikTok uh, or trying to get on a Spotify playlist. Now you should try those things. There's nothing wrong with those things, but everybody's trying for those things. And so I think it's cool that there's promotional opportunities in your hometown, at music festivals and at fairs and country fairs and um, in local high schools or in colleges and clubs and in bookstores and in independent record store. There's a lot of things that you can do to promote your release that you don't have to look at the traditional ways. Like you don't necessarily have to look at big FM radio. You could go to smaller college radios. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily pitch to the massively big editorial Spotify playlist. You can look for even the people within your own friend circles who have decent playlists and pitch to them. Number 43, you have more support now than ever before. I mentioned our Facebook group, come join it. There's our podcast. There's A2IM, a great organization for independent record labels. There's our subreddit. There's a huge um, indie label community on Twitter. There's just so many people out there who are sharing information and wisdom is a great time to start a record label. Number 44, um, this kind of leading into the last point is that there's older labels, labels who've been around for a while who could mentor you. You know, maybe if there's a, a record label in, there was an older record label in my city that reached out to me when I was getting started and they helped me and gave me some great advice. And so there might be a record label who's been around for a while in your city who can help mentor you. And maybe you could reach out to a label you admire online and just list five or 10 questions and say, Hey, I'm just getting started. I'm wondering if you can help out. There are labels out there who will do that for you.
Number 45, you can find tons of ideas and inspiration from these labels that I'm talking about. Now, I'm not talking about copying their ideas, just like learning from some of the cool things that they're doing and maybe not taking that actual thing that they're doing, but just the principle and the ethos behind some of their promotional things or some of the releases that they're doing and then apply that to your own interests and to your own record label. Number 46, the purpose of a record label is currently being rewritten. The definition of what an indie record label is today is being rewritten. And I encourage you to join us in that process of rewriting what it means to be an independent record label and shedding that baggage of the 80s and 90s of those problematic record labels and to create uh, an organization, a company, a platform for artists. Number 47 is starting a record label is the ultimate expression of being a fan. There's being a fan, then there's a fan who buys records. Then there's a fan who buys records and merch and goes to stores and goes to shows. Then there's a fan who does all that, plus pesters their friends about listening to this music. Then there's the fan who does all of that, pesters their friends and family, and then pesters the rest of the world by starting a record label and saying, you've got to hear this band. Number 48, we're getting to the end here. Oh my gosh, thanks for staying with me. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to hang out with artists. It's fun to record music. It's fun to get good reviews back. It's fun to see people buying records. It's fun to go to the post office and ship records. You'll eventually get sick of it, but it's just fun. It's fun to run a record label. Number 49 is I have a bunch of free resources for you that you can download by going to otherrecordlabels.com, including our record label toolkit. You can get at otherrecordlabels.com slash toolkit. And number 50 is I'm here for you. I mean, I just love talking about record labels. I've been obsessed with record labels ever since I was a little boy, opening a cassette, looking at the liner notes, reading, what was this logo on the back? What is this? Is this a recording studio? Like where, what is this record label that they're talking about? That's a, my obsession started at a very young age. And I love talking about record labels. You can email me anytime. You can hit me up on social media, or you can comment on this video, uh, come to other and let's talk about you starting a record label.